Welcome to Picks with the Professor, the show where a real statistics professor and his friend Jake gives you sports betting tips. I'm your host, Professor Sides, and for the latest updates, information, and picks, you can follow me on Twitter at Professor Sides. You can follow my friend Jake on Twitter at my friend underscore Jake. Today is Tuesday, May 24th, 2022. This episode covers today's best Major League Baseball bets. I'll briefly touch on the remaining games at the end of the show in extra innings. In case you're new here, I built a mathematical model for win probability, hitter and pitcher projections, and I analyzed weather data in order to make one pick, and one pick only on every game played Monday through Saturday. That doesn't mean I recommend you do the same. I'm just giving the information as to what I like the most and where my head is for each matchup. Let's go through the plays. Remember, there are no locks and gambling, so we'll give you our loves, likes, and leans to help you decide which plays you might want and how I recommend scaling wagers. With that in mind, please understand that good and bad variants will occur, so as much as I'd like to say will be profitable each and every day, that is an impossible reality for any gambler. Uh, Jake Yesha, the official picks down 0.01 units. It's kind of the funniest outcome we could have had. Yeah. Other than just straight up even, right? That would have been, yeah. I guess, a little funnier. Um, well, with, um, with the full slate. If you follow me on Twitter, though, I tweeted out as the Indians had that pitcher change. I really like the game under that hit. Hopefully some of you got into that. I also had some hockey winners last night. A lot of hockey winners. Um, so that was good. So hopefully... Uh, even though the official picks were break even, hopefully it helped you make a little bit of money last night, dear listener. Uh, before we get to today's slate, some reminders, please hit that like button if you're on YouTube. Also, if you aren't yet, please consider subscribing or following. It's free and the only way to ensure you don't miss any of the college basketball, MLB, or college football content that this channel provides. Share with a friend if you know there's in the game. Hit us up on Twitter or drop a comment if you're on YouTube. We love those and try to respond to as many as we can. And as a reminder, I always encourage people to have multiple sports books in their portfolio, especially ones with those MLB dime lines. These are your disposal. You should be able to find an edge on any game. I have a couple that I recommend. The links are in the show's description and on the website, www.pickswiththeprofessor.com slash sportsbooks. Jake, no day games today, unfortunately. I know. Sad day. Sad, Sad day. day. I, I Yeah, it's like we got to work during the day and not have baseball out of the background. It's... You know, no fun. No fun. No fun. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, we'll start off 640 Eastern. First pitch with the Marlins at the Rays. Pablo Lopez versus Shane McClanahan. Obviously in a dome there uh, in Tampa, so no weather to speak of. Definitely a pitcher's park, though. And two pitchers who have been fantastic this year, uh, both of them with ERAs below two and a half. And pitchers that I project to be Maybe not quite as good as they've looked, but not far from it. Obviously, two great pitchers. I've heard me talk about both of them, how much I like Pablo Lopez and think he's undervalued. Model says Rays minus 144. As of right now, there's no edge on either side. Total is six and a half. Y'all know I hate the six and a half. Anytime I see that number, I tend to look first five. And so that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to go first five under three. At plus 105, and I'm giving this an A pick. I love the odds at plus odds here on this one. Both offenses are below average. Both pitchers well above average. I actually like both bullpens, so I don't think full game under is a bad look. I just personally don't love six and a half as a number. Um, but I think first, uh, whether it's first five or full game, you have great starting pitchers, good bullpens, bad offenses, pitchers park. I don't see there being many runs scored in this game. So in some way, shape, or form, I think you got to look under. I'm going first five under, three at plus 105, and I'm giving this an A pick. I think it's going to be a quick, low-scoring game. Jake, what do you think? Yeah, I'm taking the full game under. Both these pitchers are top tier right now. I yeah. mean, I, I think there's a good case for Pablo for Cy Young right now in, in the NL because he's really been dominating. Um, and – you're right. Both offenses. There's not a name there that really scares you. I mean, I love Soler for what he did for the Braves, but the guy, it's it's a home run or an out. Yeah. And I think that's the way most of Tampa is too. I mean, a Rays Arena, Radio Rays Arena. He's not been what they thought they would be after that playoff run where they gave him the big contract. Uh, so it's just, I think the offenses are too bad and. Uh, and these pitchers are really good. So uh, I'm, I'm doing the full game under. All right. So Jake's on the full game under six and a half. I won the first five under three in that one. Seven to five Eastern first pitch Dodgers at the Nationals. Got some easy winners with the Dodgers. We got the full game in yesterday. So if you took the full game run line, if you took the first five run line, 
either way was an easy winner. Walker Bueller versus Josiah Gray. I think we kind of match up very similar to yesterday with the difference of the Dodgers pitchers a little better, the Nationals pitchers a little better. Not that I think Josiah Gray is good, but I think he's an upgrade over a dome, but that's not really saying much. Uh, the Nationals couldn't score yesterday off Tyler Anderson. I believe he had a perfect game into the sixth inning. I don't see them doing much off of Walker Bueller. <laughs> I mean, uh, Walker Bueller may not necessarily, you know, when he kind of came up, I think we we thought he'd be in contention for the Cy Young every year. And he may not be quite that good, but he's still a very good pitcher. Uh, should have no problem dominating this Nationals offense. It'll be a chilly night in Washington, around 60 degrees, a slight breeze in from right field at about five miles an hour, but not going to affect things too much. Maybe some rain, but if so, it's either going to miss the park or it'll be really light. Shouldn't affect it. We should be able to get the full nine in. Model says Dodgers minus 219. I'm seeing a price of 207 out there. I think laying the money line at 207 is a perfectly fine option. I think... Uh, it, it, it's not often that I would say that a minus 200 or better has value, but I think it has value because I think the Dodgers win more than enough times to make that a good play. I definitely would not want to take the Nats on this one. Uh, instead, I'm going to go one line. I'm going to go Dodgers minus one and a half. The odds are minus 130, and it's an A pick for me. Like I said, I think it's a mirror image of yesterday with both starting pitchers just a tiny bit better. Instead of the Dodgers winning 10 to one, I think maybe they win six to one tonight. Uh, I think they should handle. Josiah Gray and get some runs off of him. The Nats bullpen isn't good. They should be able to get some runs off of off of that whenever that happens. I don't see the Nats scoring off of Bueller. I, I don't see how you can't be on the Dodgers in this game. I think the odds on this, I think the money line, I, I'm surprised the money line isn't more like minus 250 or something out there. That would have been, I would have seen that been like, yeah, that, that makes sense. That tracks. The fact that it's closer to minus 200 is kind of weird for me. I'm going to take advantage of it. I'm going run line at Dodgers, A grade for me, Jake. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, I'm taking the run line with you here. Uh, the Dodgers are just leaps and bounds above this Nationals team at every level. I also like Walker Buehler's uh, over and strikeout total. What I'm seeing is four, four and a half. So, because I think he goes six or seven this one, so give me give me a couple extra run innings to uh, get get over that to five. I really like that. I like tying them together too because it put, puts a nice little total on it. But uh, I think it'll give you like plus 185 or something is what I'm seeing for that. So that like taking the run line and the strikeout total will be a nice little payday. Right. Or I guess if you want to be a little more conservative, you can do money line yeah. in that as well. Probably more like even money. Yeah. Um, I personally, I, you know, not to say that again, we talk about, you know, I don't generally love parlays. Uh, it, it puts money at risk and it, it, in different areas that makes it hard to really manage the portfolio. And again, I always think you want to have more money where you're more confident, less where you're less. And, the parlays kind of throw that off and it kind of gets things out of whack and it creates a little too much variability for me. But but if you do the, the parlays, Dodgers money line makes sense. But I, I'm going to say this and I'm going to hesitate saying this because after saying this, the Dodgers are going to win by one run because that's the way this goes. But it <laughs> feels like a game where if the Dodgers don't win by a lot, they have as, just as good of a chance of losing as they do winning by one. So it's like it feels like the run line is just the way to go here because it's one of those where it's either going to be a laugher, which is what I think will happen, or if it's tight, it's like, the Dodgers might, if they screw around, they probably lose if they screw around, right? Like it, it feels like that kind of game, and that's obviously not a, you know an exact science, but it seems like run line is the smarter way to go given that offense against a subpar pitcher. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. All right, seven twenty Eastern first pitch, Phillies at the Braves. Kyle Gibson versus Max Freed, uh, two fairly solid pitchers. Gibson maybe a little bit above average. Max Freed, of course, well above average. Uh, Free starting to pitch a little better, I think, this part of the year than he was early on. He seems to be looking yeah. a little better. And his advanced metrics actually have him better than his ERA. His ERA at 330 is pretty good. Um, Weather-wise, we're going to start off around 80 degrees, close around 70. Uh, a really slight breeze in, nothing that's going to really affect things too much. I have it at four miles an hour. The issue with this one's going to be rain. It's either going to – th there's a lot of options, I should say. There's a lot of options. I won't list them all, but there's a chance this game gets postponed. One that you're going to want to check the radar on as it gets closer if you're a DFS player or regular fantasy. Um, so we may get rained out. We may have some rain delay. And there's a lot of different options on the table. If it happens, the model thinks Braves minus 153 is the right line. And that's right in between the juice for these two sides. So no edge on either side. So I'm staying away from that. Instead, the total's eight. And I'm going to go under eight with a B pick. It was a low scoring game last night. I think that tonight... 
Uh, sorry, it was a low scoring game. It was a low scoring game for one side last night. The, the Braves really struggled. Only got the runs late when I think the Phillies were, um, you know, m- mostly just trying to get out of there with a win, right? I don't think the Phillies are going to be able to score like they did yesterday on Max Fried. So I think it's going to be more of that three runs for each side. Um, I think under eight makes a lot of sense. Only a B pick for me. As I've talked about, the Phillies offense can be really up and down and can put it together. I don't think they do off of Fried, but it's there potentially. Um, the Braves offense, again, same sort of thing. Can be very good. Gibson is a pitcher they can hit around, so they could score a few more runs. So it's not a pick I love. But in general... Um, Gibson has been solid again this year. As long as he has another solid outing, this should stay right around this number of eight. I think under is the right play when I like, not when I love Jake. What do you think? Yeah, I'm, I'm leaning. If I was going to make a play on this, I would lean the under, um, cause, uh, Brian Snedeker is, he's toying with that lineup so much and the defense for the Braves, especially the outfield is real wonky right now. Cause they can't decide if they want to play Ozuna, put Contreras out there and left or, uh, anybody else that Rosario, I mean, with Rosario being out, it's putting a little strain out there and the offense can sometimes just put it together and go up, and put up almost 30 and, or it can just be non-existent and the same thing with the Phillies. So I, I just I get real nervous. So I'm just, I'm not making a play on this, but if I if I were to lean because both these pitchers are really good, um, it'd be the under. All righty, seven forty Eastern first pitch. Tigers at the Twins. Bo Brisky versus Sonny Gray. In a chilly night in Minnesota, we'll be in the mid sixties to start closing around sixty degrees. Winds blowing in from center field about five to ten miles an hour. The model says Twins minus 225, so no real edge on either side as of this moment. So I'm seeing a price like Twins minus 250. It's just too steep for me personally. I'm going to go under eight in this one as well, also a B pick. Sonny Gray has been pretty solid this year. His advanced numbers are right in line with his ERA. I project him to be maybe a tiny bit worse, but not by much. Still a very above average pitcher. The Tigers' offense is very bad. I don't see the Tigers scoring. I looked at team total, but the number that I'm seeing, again, I'm putting everything here at one book. That way, it's not about line shopping, right? You can do that and get better odds. I encourage you to line shop, but I'm not trying to pick the one best line at every obscure book possible, right? So the number I'm seeing is two and a half. Two and a half is just a really low number, and it's really tough to get excited about that. Um, If you have three, I think under three for the Tigers makes a lot of sense. Like I said, their offense is bad. Sunny Gray is good. So instead of going under two and a half, I'll take the full game under. Only a B pick simply because the Twins can score like four runs in one inning, and I wouldn't be shocked. I think they probably do, and I think it probably still goes under. I see this being a like six to one type Twins win. Anything can happen in baseball, so that's why I, you know it's not a guarantee that that six to win is going to happen, right? So it's why I'm not jumping all over the Twins. I just don't think there's value in the odds, and it's not going to be a profitable long term play for us. But I think under eight is probably the best look for this one. Again, if you have Tigers team total under three, you can look that way. I don't like first five for the same reason. I don't know when the Twins are going to have an inning where they score four runs. If it's early on, that first five would be in trouble. So I'll take the full game under eight and just hope that Brisky can be mediocre enough, you know, go six innings, give up three runs and keep this under for us. Cause I think Sonny Gray and the Tigers offense will do their part for us. Jake, what do you think? Yeah. The tw- <laughs> I want to play the under here too, but I, I have not got the twins right this year. So I'm not, <laughs> you know, it's like, I would rather not lose my money. So I am fair, going, very fair point. <laughs> I'm going to watch them and see if they can do what I think they'll do for a couple games in a row before I play them again. Cause right now it's just, Every time I play something, it's like, up, oh, and we're going to do the opposite. So I'm, that's, I'm just dodging them. <laughs> that's, the, that's the Giants for me. I feel like we're back to, like, I can't even say their name on pod. It's like, <laughs> just got to just ignore them completely because if I talk about them, it's going to go the opposite direction. So I, I, I feel like we all have teams like that, right? Yeah. It's, good to, it's good to identify that and just be like, you know what? We're just going to either lower our units on that team or just completely avoid them because it's not worth it if, it's, if they just continue to zigzag you. Yeah. <laughs> 45 Eastern first pitch. Blue Jays at the Cardinals. Kevin Gaussman versus Jordan Hicks. Hicks is a pitcher who, in his last three starts, now has gone between four and five innings. So it does appear like they are trying to stretch him out as a starter. 
versus Kevin Gaussman, who I think I might have said some ill words about him earlier in the season, and I apologize for those. I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it was like the first podcast. I was like, I'm not sure what to expect of him. I don't think he'll be as good as last year. He has been as good as last year. Every his underlying metrics are even better than his ERA. So he's done, he's done fantastic this year. So hats off to him. It'll be in the mid to low 70s in St. Louis, a wind blowing in from right field at about 10 miles an hour. I'd rather have it in from left to affect the righties, but in from right at 10 miles an hour is still good for pitchers. Model says Blue Jays minus 130, so no edge on either side of this one. I'm going to go first five under four. The odds are minus 130. It's a B play for me. The odds are awful. I hate laying minus 130 on a total. So it's only a B pick for that reason. I do love the push protection of the four, but only a B pick because the odds. And Hicks is very okay. He's a pitcher that I am a little bit nervous about how many runs he's going to give up in the start. We feel pretty confident he'll go four or five. I am hoping to get Blue Jays up two to one after five. That feels like a reasonable outcome, but it's only a B pick because I'm just a little nervous that Blue Jays offense, if it ever gets going against an, an average pitcher like Hicks, they could put up three or four themselves in those first four or five innings and or put up you know two runs in the first four and then Hicks gets in trouble. And then it's that fifth inning we've got to sweat now with the bullpen in the game. So it's one that I like this first five under four. I think Gaussman's fantastic. I think he can hold the Cardinals down. I'm just, I can't quite get there to an A pick knowing that Hicks is not quite that same caliber and knowing that I've got to lay minus 130. But with the wind blowing in, I think the under is the way to look. I'm going to go first five under four rather than full game under seven and a half, especially because last night's under got blown by a walk-off grand slam. You don't see those every day. I walk off Grand Slam by like one foot, by the way. So, I mean, if you had that, if you had that under eight, you were probably throwing your remote uh, on, yes. on a ball that one foot lower, two foot, two feet lower, and it's a four to three win instead of a seven to three win. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure somebody had that, and that's got to be really frustrating. But I'm just going to avoid the full game. I'm going to go first five under four B pick for me in this one. Jake, what do you think? Oh, man, this is a game I, I think will be a great game to watch. And I didn't find anything that I liked the price that I was paying on. So I'm not playing anything on this. I would love to pick the Cardinals to win here, but I, I didn't like the value I was getting with it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of dodge this one too, <laughs> just because uh, yeah. it wasn't anything like price the way I wanted it to be. Yep, yeah, and that's the it, it's such a different sport than football and basketball. Or football and, ba and basketball, it's about the points, but the price is usually the same. So it's like you know yeah. what price you're paying. It's just about the points, and in baseball, it's all about the price. So it's Definitely a very different uh, angle there. So, yeah, never never a bad idea if you don't like the prices to pass on that one. Uh, Guardians at the Astros, 18 Eastern first pitch. Zach Plesak versus Fromber Valdez. Talked about it yesterday. I don't think Plesak is very good. Fromber has been fantastic this year. Had a couple of shaky starts early on, but has pitched really well this month. The model says Astros minus 191, so maybe an edge on the Guardians at plus 197. I'm not personally going to play it, but we, we talk about Fromber is very hit or miss. Maybe a live play after the first inning, just kind of seeing how he looks. If he's on, I wouldn't want to touch the Guardians, but if Fromber looks a little shaky and he doesn't get you know his six, seven strong innings, the Guardians at plus 200 is not bad value. It's, just, it's not what I'm going to play, but it's just something to keep in mind with Fromber being just a, a very erratic pitcher. Total is eight. I'm going to make the same play I did yesterday. It didn't work out for us then, but I like the Guardians team total under three and a half. We've gotten good Fromber so much lately, and Guardians offense yesterday notwithstanding, I don't think is very good. I don't know how many runs the Astros are going to score off a of Plesek. I don't want to have to care, so I'm going to isolate Guardians team total under three and a half. I don't love the odds at minus 140, but I don't think they get past three, so it's an A pick for me. If the odds get any higher than this, that's a little tougher to swallow. This is about as high as I want to play it for the A grade. Um, if you had under three, I think under three is fine as well. They might push, but like I said, I, I, I see the Guardians have a hard time getting to four, especially with the Astros having 
all their better relievers rested since they didn't need them last night. Uh, Jake, what do you think? Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you here. I, I'm not making the play because, once again, it's not priced where I wanted to. Um, but, I mean, it's something something to keep an eye on is Framber's uh, strikeout total. Uh, where, where it's sitting at right now, I wouldn't touch it around, I think it's four and a half to five and a half, somewhere in there. I wouldn't touch it either way. But the Indi- uh, <laughs> the Guardians are uh, one of the best teams at not striking out. So kind of an under kind of watch if it gets if you can get it up closer to six or so because Framber doesn't go that deep, but right now where it's at, I wouldn't play it. But it's something to keep an eye on. And it's an interesting point you make there with with Framber being such an extreme ground ball pitcher. A lot of times he doesn't go deep when he strikes people out, but a lot of times if he can get those quick ground balls, that gives him more length but fewer strikeouts. So he's a pitcher where he's not really correlated with innings and strikeouts like a lot of pitchers are because for him the innings come when he's not striking guys out because he's getting ground ball outs which is something he wants to do so it's an interesting angle that you talk about because if the guardians aren't going to strike out they're going to put the ball in play that might lead to more quicker ground ball outs which is going to get him some length but he's not going to get any strikeouts from it and 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 ask any starting pitcher they'll trade a few strikeouts for uh, extra length, you know, if he can, if I can get him to through seven with fewer strikeouts, but a lot of ground ball outs, I think he'd take that uh, every day of the week. So uh, definitely an interesting angle there to keep an eye on. Some late games for us, 930 Eastern first pitch Rangers at the Angels, Dane Dunning versus Noah Syndergaard. Starting off in Anaheim, around 70 degrees, closing in the mid-60s. No real wind to speak of. A slight breeze to start out to left center, around five miles an hour. Not going to affect things too much. Dunning is a pitcher who has fairly good numbers, a sub-4 ERA. Actually, advanced metrics have him better than that. I project him to be a sub-4 going forward, a little above average. Syndergaard has a 360 ERA on the year. I project him to be a little bit worse than that, but he obviously has the potential to do really well. And against this bad Rangers offense, I think that's he's got a really good chance to do that. As I mentioned before, the Rangers tend to score off the worst off of the weaker pitchers. Uh, Syndergaard, I don't think, falls in that category, as I still think he is above average. Model says Angels minus 173, so I'm going to trust the model and go Angels minus 153. There's a huge discrepancy there, so it's an A pick for me. My biggest fear in the Angels usually comes around who's playing in their lineup. As I've mentioned before, they are the most extreme team in baseball. Um, Ward is not the best hitter in baseball, but the fact that I have to say that just tells you how good he is. Like He is extremely good. Trout is the best hitter in baseball. And so when one or both of those guys are out, it changes their offense more than any team in baseball. Given the Angels didn't play last night, I assume it's a full lineup. So it's one of the few times where I have confidence we'll get them both. If not, I would be very hesitant because, like I said, one of those guys or, or both those guys not playing for one reason or the other, and things just go sideways with them in a hurry. But with both those guys in that lineup, it is an above-average offense. I think – the Rangers offense being very below average helps us get to the window here with the Angels minus 153. A pick for me. You could look first five if you didn't trust the Angels bullpen. That would also be something to keep an eye on. I'll just take the full game. I like the odds here at minus 153. Jake, what's your play? Yeah, I'm taking the Angels with you. I I need to apologize to Noah Syndergaard because I didn't think what he was doing this year would last. Um, Dane Dunning has been about what I expected, just – just right solid. around there, four number solid, but eh, nothing special. But Noah has really surprised me, and you're right with them not playing. I expect I would expect the full lineup, and that full lineup is one of the most, besides the Dodgers, probably the scariest offensive lineup that I can really think of. And it's just, I think they got it in the bag, really. Yeah, I think that I think the issue with the Angels, of course, the bottom part, that's what makes the Dodgers just puts them in a whole different world, right? It's the bottom part of the Dodgers lineup is as good as half the team's top lineup, right? Top of the lineup, right? Yeah. Uh, the Angels fall off really quickly. But I mean, the, the top half of that Angels lineup when they're all playing is extremely scary. It's just it, it's a Jekyll and Hyde type story. But you get those guys going together and it's pretty easy for a couple extra base hits in a row. Pitchers are scared. They, I don't know how many times I've seen the guy a guy get walked because they're nervous and the next guy is just as good of a hitter hits a home run boom two runs yeah. right there on you know seven pitches so yeah that top half of that angels lineup can definitely do some damage uh so jake and i both like the angels tonight in general the angels prices tend to get higher as the day goes on so when i wouldn't wait on i'd go ahead and take the angels earlier in the day 940 eastern first pitch athletics at the mariners 
a game I had an under on yesterday, and I said I couldn't get to an A pick because I was just nervous about both pitchers. And sure enough, both pitchers really were bad. The bullpens came in and for the most part shored things up. I think it was 7-6 in the sixth inning, and it finished 7-6. Uh, but both those starters were a little bit a uh, little bit nervous, made me a little nervous, and uh, sure enough, neither one of them looked good at all. Tonight we'll have Capri Allen versus George Kirby. Kirby with a 3-6 ERA. His underlying metrics put him right about there. Definitely a good pitcher. Again, as I mentioned, one who I project to be above average already as a rookie, uh, which is not easy to do. The model tends to say rookies bring them back down to put their below average, even though they might be good one day. Kirby, the exception to that rule. Uh, Capriel in a below average pitcher. Dome in Seattle, so I assume if the open, oh, they open the roof, it'll be a nice night. Model says the Mariners minus 150. I'm staying away from the side on this one. Uh, I'm looking at the total, but I'm specifically going to isolate the A's under three and a half. I don't like the juice here at minus 142, but it's a similar story to the Guardians and the Astros. I don't see the A's getting to four. Their offense is very, very bad against Kirby, who I think is really good. I don't see how the A's get to four, so I'm not really that concerned about the juice, even though... It's hard to stomach a pick for me on the A's to not score very many runs. I'm isolating that because I don't know how many runs the Mariners will score off Capriel and Capriel isn't good, but I personally just don't want to have to care if they score two runs or 10 runs. It's not my problem. As long as the A's stay three or lower, which I think they will, we get the winner. Jake, what do you think? Yeah, I'm, I'm riding the Mariners here. I really like Gibson or Gibson, uh, Kirby. I don't know why I keep wanting to say Gibson, but uh, Kirk. Kirby, I think he is he's one of those rookie pitchers from a fantasy, fantasy perspective I've been watching for a while. Um, I, and I think he is going to be very, very good all year. And I, I, the, as bad as the A's are offensively, I think it's going to make him shine a little bit. Yeah. And I think they've got a really good chance here to get a win. Yeah, we always talk about, you know, facing a weaker offense is the cure for a struggling pitcher. I talked about that yesterday with Tyler Anderson, you know, being a an average pitcher, uh, but facing the Nats offense is a, hey, great, you can boost your stats. And sure enough, that's what he did. And I feel like it's kind of like the same thing here, except for Kirby. It's like, okay, this is time to really boost my stats, right? So uh, a great opportunity for him to lower his ERA even more and get himself um, some nice numbers. He will definitely enjoy facing this week athletics offense. So I'm going A's under three and a half. With an A play, Jake, you were riding the Mariners at minus 150. And the Royals of the Diamondbacks, 940 Eastern first pitch. Diamondbacks scared us last night, giving up four runs in the first inning. That tied a major league record with five home runs in the first inning. <laughs> it was something to watch. Um, <laughs> Diamondbacks came back and won handily in the end. I mentioned you could go first five. Uh, that one in the full game as well won, which is what I was on. Tonight it'll be John Heasley versus Zach Gallen. Of course, a huge starting pitcher mismatch. Heasley has a 430 ERA, but his advanced metrics are much worse than that. I project him to be well below average. Of course, Zach Gallen is a very good pitcher. A 114 ERA, he won't finish the year with that ERA. His advanced metrics, though, still also very good. I project him to be around a 350 ERA for the rest of the season. Still a very good pitcher. Model thinks Diamondbacks minus 196. You could lay it with the Diamondbacks at minus 190. You could lay the run line with the Diamondbacks. You could go first five. There's a lot of different ways to go. And I really think it's kind of like rolling the die, whichever way you want to look at it. It's one that I, I can't – I looked at this for a couple of minutes, and I was trying to figure out, but I was looking at the odds. I think they all are about the same in value. To me, it's about personal preference. I think the Diamondbacks are the way you want to look. I don't love laying bigger odds, so I'm going to go with first five Diamondbacks to win at minus 140 with an A pick. The Diamondbacks seem to be playing fairly well. Gallon is a pitcher I love to back. The Royals aren't good. Their offense isn't good. It's one of those things where, like I said, you have to be on the Diamondbacks one way, shape, or form. It's just what sort of odds do you want to lay between first five, run line, money line, full game, money line, run line. I think it's a straight toss-up on all of them. I'll go first five Diamondbacks to win a pick for me, but I think any of those options makes a lot of sense depending on what your personal preference and favorite is. Uh, Jake, which way are you looking? Yeah, I'm looking Diamondbacks run line here. I, I really don't like the Royals. I, like after Grinky, I don't think there's much on that team, and, and especially offensively, they're really bad. And <laughs> Gallon is having a very, very good year. I don't think he keeps it up all the way through, but right now 
you can't you can't bet against him yeah. and that offense can just turn it on which has been really surprising that the diamondback like the diamondbacks are approaching that like hey maybe they're good maybe yeah yeah kind of thing and uh so it's, i think I, I think i said that a couple of weeks ago i was like the diamondbacks like might be like not bad okay and it's yeah. like they kind of keep playing okay it's uh yeah yeah it's, it's gonna it's gonna be wild that that whole nl west the division, whole division yeah. Yeah. so it's it's gonna be crazy but i, I really like him tonight the minus one half all right so you're taking the run line it's about even money on that one and that takes us to extra innings a handful of other games today Cubs at the Reds will be about 70 degrees. Winds blowing in or across from left field. It looks like it's more across than in. So I'm going to assume there's no real wind effect. Stroman versus Malley. I'm going over eight with a lean just to see pick. These teams tend to score a lot of runs, it seems like, and play in higher scoring games. So I'm just going to go over eight with a lean there. Uh, I don't think Malley is very good but i think for the most part the league's uh, the rest everyone's kicks kind of figuring that out too so i don't think there's a ton of value there but i'll go over eight orioles at the yankees zimmerman versus montgomery uh two pitchers who've had pretty solid seasons and advanced metrics are not bad i still project montgomery to be better given his track record uh, but, but zimmerman's had a solid season um it'll be in the mid 60s in new york wins five to ten miles an hour in but I'm going to go over eight in this one as well, just to lean. The Yankees' bullpen has been has really struggled. Um, last night in a game, I didn't think there'd be many runs, and I think there were 10. So I'm going to go over eight as well, but just to lean. Not one I liked. It. I don't want to go over against these two pitchers, but I just think eight's a little priced a little too low. So I'll go with a lean over eight. Red Sox at the White Sox. Nick Pavetta versus Dylan Cease. A chilly night in Chicago, mid-50s. Wins strong, but mostly across 10 to 15 miles an hour. Obviously, Dylan Cease is fantastic. Nick Pavetta is very average. Um, no edge on either side. I'll take the White Sox over four and a half. It's plus odds with a lean. It's hard to back Cease at this point because everyone else knows how good he is. So you're having to pay the price. So it's like, I want to back Dylan Cease, but I can't find a way to do it without having to pay too much of a premium. I mean, everyone knows he's fantastic at this point. Need him to have a couple of bad games in a row or something to bring it back to the earth. Exactly. It, well, a couple, and a couple of bad luck games in a row, yeah. right? Where it's like he gives up runs and people are like, oh, he's not as good anymore. But like we can see through it and say like, oh, it was just, you know, luck here, X, Y, Z, you know, that sort of thing. And we can still back him. But yeah, at this point, it's just the price isn't there. Also, I'll take, I'll take White Sox team total over. I think Nick Pavetta is very average. I think they can score off of him. Only a lean because it's a chilly night, so it's not one that I really want to be invested too much in. Bruce, the Padres, Corbin Ver Burns versus Blake Snell, which should be a good pitching matchup. Um, Snell made it into the fourth last time. I expect him to be able to go a little bit deeper today. I'm going to go – the model says there's a little bit of an edge on the Padres. I don't think that's a bad play. Definitely a value play, especially with – Josh Hader out for this series that really affects their bullpen and affected it last night. Um, but given it's Corbin Burns, who's fantastic, and given that Snell, um, we don't exactly know what to expect still from him, I can't take the Padres. But if you're getting some plus odds, I don't think that's bad. It's kind of a coin toss game. I'll go first five under three. It's plus odds, just a lean. I don't really love – the first five under three given i just don't know with snell it's one of those things where if i could trust that snell was going to get us through five strong i'd like a little more but it's one i just can't like too much and i'm not, sure. Yep. So not sure if it's gonna make a difference but i think it's um i'm out here in san diego on that oh, yeah. we'll head night tuesday so there might be a little more crowd to it might might make push you over a little edge there or something i don't, I don't know there you go maybe a little extra padres that just fans yep. into it yeah. yeah. Uh, Mets at the Giants. Are you going to any of the games while you're out there? I'm, I'm going to Wednesdays, the day going game. Going to Wednesdays. Okay. Yeah, it's a little chilly out here at night. I ain't trying to freeze. It is. It is. Uh, it, I, I went to a game in San Francisco with Mrs. Professor. This was back before we were married. Uh, we took a trip out there a long time ago. And uh, it, it was so – it was in the middle of summer. It was – I think it was July. And maybe it was, maybe it was August. I mean, middle of the summer. And – 
we were so cold. We did one of those offers that they had there, which was genius. It was like sign up for their newspaper, ten dollar a month subscription to get a hoodie. And we were like, yeah. well, it's cheaper than what the gift shop has. So sure, we'll pay the ten dollars for the month subscription, cancel it, and we'll pay ten dollars for this hoodie that we'll never use again. But we are so cold. It was like August, you know. It's crazy. It really yeah. blew my mind up. I did not pack accordingly. Yep, yep. Uh, speaking of the Giants, Mets, Giants tonight, Chris Bassett versus Logan Webb. I can't figure the Giants out no matter what I do. I have no idea in this game. Two really good pitchers, but the Giants' bullpen has just completely fallen off a cliff this year. I'm not sure how much of that has to do with Buster Posey, how much it has to do with last year might have been some good luck. But that Giants' bullpen is just atrocious. I'm going to go first five under three and a half just because I don't have to deal with the bullpen, and Logan Webb has still been very good this year. Bassett also very good. So I'll take the first five under three and a half, but – I'm always wrong on the Giants, so take that for what it's worth. And then the last one, Rockies and Pirates. There's no line out on this one as of yet. Kyle Freeland versus Ranzi Contreras. So I will tweet a pick on that later in the day. Jake, any parting words for us before I recap the A plays? Hey, college baseball, if you've been paying attention at all, that's about to start kicking up or you might start getting odds at your books. Uh, Tennessee, that's, that's a team to kind of blindly follow right now. They are outrageously good is tennessee's the guy that has the pitcher who throws like 120 miles an hour or something right? yeah yeah he set the record and like it's just nuts and he's a freshman so wow. I, don't, I mean take that for what you will um they've that, got so two, he'll two have to be there for a couple more years then yeah we've got wow. two first round picks with jordan beck who's supposed to be in the top 10 and then blake Tid- blade tidwell as a lefty pitcher so those it's a very very good team to watch right now Yep, yep. Uh, that should be a lot of fun. All right, A plays for me today. Marlins and the Rays. I'm going first five under three. Dodgers and the Nationals. I'm going Dodgers run line. Guardians and the Astros. I'm taking Guardians team total under three and a half. Rangers at the Angels. I'm back in the Angels. A's at the Mariners. I'm taking the A's team total under three and a half. And then Diamondbacks, Royals. I've got the Diamondbacks first five to win. And that is all we have for you today. Thanks for tuning into another show here on Picks with the Professor. A reminder, check out the Google Sheet for model picks, projections, and results. You can find that link at the website, www.pickswiththeprofessor.com, or in the show's description here. If you haven't done so yet, please click that subscribe button to ensure all the sports betting content we provide on this channel dropped right into your feed. I will see you tomorrow. And until then, remember, you can eat your betting money, but please don't bet your eating money.